This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is the midweek edition of the Barbados Today Evening News Update. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. A government senator tells the University of the West Indies it is time to take a second look at its academic offerings. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Chapter Inns, says he fears the region will be left behind if the educational institution fails to act. He was speaking in the Senate during today's debate on the Caribbean Accreditation Authority Education in Medicine and Other Health Professions Incorporation Bill. INS wrapped the UWI for not taking the lead on critical research to ensure the region remains on the cutting edge. He specifically cited the lack of research on marijuana, which he says is fast becoming a mega industry. What I'm saying is that we have this talent at the University of the West Indies. And we should have, we sh we should have been the, at the forefront of the research on marijuana uses for diseases, for medical purposes. We should be at the forefront. We should not allow. And what is going to happen, Madam President? As I said, I have been tracking it, reading all of the information, see what is coming out. I am of the opinion, this is Jack's opinion, that once the United States reach, reach the stage where they have found the remedies in marijuana for a lot of diseases, because right now in most of the states, they are literally allowing the use of marijuana for medicinal purposes. They are going to issue license, and they are going to issue license to bring that product into the country. I am saying that as I stand here in this stand. When, when I look at the research and what is happening, I think that is what is going to happen. And we are going to be here standing saying, if we had known. Another talking point during the debate was the accreditation of Barbadian doctors who have trained in Cuba. Currently, those doctors cannot practice here unless they take the Caribbean Association of Medical Councils exam. But Professor Sir Henry Fraser, the former dean of the Faculty of Medicine at the UWI, told the Upper House the requirement is in place to maintain high standards. Cuba's great reputation in medical training lies in its excellent public health programs and not in the clinical skills with which the students graduate. There are so many students being trained in Cuba and there are so many nurses. The health system is so well provided for in so many areas that their students graduated apparently without the ability to set up an intravenous line or to take a blood sample or to do the other clinical procedures that our students are all taught to do halfway through their medical course and which a practicing doctor in Barbados must be able to do. Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott weighed in briefly on the matter, saying it was an accreditation issue that must be cleared up. However, he turned his attention to a foreign medical school based here that he says is not accredited. Walcott cautions this has implications for Barbadians studying at the institution. I know that the American University of Barbados has not fulfilled accreditation requirements. It applied, it submitted some information, Two years ago, was asked to submit additional information, and this has not yet been forthcoming. So as it stands today, the American University of Barbados, operating in Barbados, has not been accredited by CHAMS, by CHAM HP. In terms of Barbadian students attending there, it would obviously mean that they will not be entitled to automatic registration to practice medicine in Barbados when they complete their studies at that institution. That will then be a matter for the Caribbean Association of Medical Councils and a series of exams which they will have to, to sit and pass to become eligible for registration in Barbados. In other news this evening, you can call it a gift of a lifetime. Two-year-old Jade Prescott can now hear for the first time. She is the first patient to undergo the cochlear implant surgery thanks to Sandy Lane Charitable Trust. 
the World Pediatric Project and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Her parents, Janelle Prescott and Damien Griffith, are elated. She heard poodles barking for the first thing yesterday and she threw her hands over her mouth and was all excited. She ran to the window and everything. Yeah. That was like a very big moment for us. Something as simple as that. Yeah. Next step from hearing all this whole thing, hearing some moms and dads pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just want to give thanks to everyone who made it possible. You actually answered a lot for myself and my family, and also her sibling, that's her sister there, Regina. Her brother is at school right now. So I'm hoping that today makes all of us proud, and she always remember where it started from. There's regional and international news after this short break. From the region, Jamaica is reviewing its place in CARICOM, and former Prime Minister Bruce Golding will lead the initiative to be carried out by the CARICOM Review Commission. Prime Minister Andrew Holness admits the decision follows tensions between his government and Trinidad and Tobago on trade issues. He says Golding and his team will assess how its membership in CARICOM has benefited the economy in key areas such as trade, investment, international competitiveness and job creation. The Commission will also evaluate CARICOM's performance against the goals and objectives outlined in the Treaty of Chagaramas and identify shortcomings. On the world scene now, in Zimbabwe, thousands marched through the streets of Harare to show their support for President Robert Mugabe. The demonstration is in response to growing opposition calls for the 92-year-old leader to step down and wranglings within his own party on who will be his successor. Mugabe is, however, holding his ground as the country remains in turmoil. Robert Mugabe has been president of Zimbabwe for three decades. He plans to run for re-election in 2018. The ZANU-PF, the party he's led since 1975, has already named him as its candidate, and it's determined this march will show how much Zimbabwe supports him. President Mugabe has uh, led his people from colonial bondage uh, to economic freedom. By economic freedom, we mean we've, uh, we've been empowered. But there are doubts about whether the turnout will be as big as it hopes. The economy, which is hit by international sanctions, is also enmeshed in accusations of widespread corruption and mismanagement. Long queues form outside banks as people try to withdraw their savings. Some are only allowed to take out a maximum of $200 at a time. It was very, very painful. Notice we are going towards the month end. We want to pay our rents. We want to do to some things we want to do with that money. The money that they are giving us, 200 is not in, 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 it's not sufficient. Critics of the planned march say that it'll cost roughly half a million dollars to organize. Money they say Zimbabwe can't afford. There won't be any million uh, supporters uh, supporting Mr. Mugabe or supporting ZANU-PF. So again, it's just propaganda by ZANU-PF to try and uh, market uh, their effort. That's the news this evening, but remember for the latest, you can visit our website www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM.
Mary Claire Williams. Have a good evening.